did you ever hear about the tree stumps from which the early settlers delivered speeches a couple of hundred years ago well we had that in mind when some of the young fellows in my neighborhood asked me to help them form a speech club so we called it the stump speaker society now of course as a lawyer i've done a great deal of public speaking but did you ever consider how many jobs depend on your ability to express yourself to a group of people? Whether it's the foreman on a project, or a judge on the bench, or a salesman, it's important to be a good speaker. And when you speak well, you get along better with people. Whether it's persuading them to come along and have fun at a wiener roast, or trying to be a better citizen at school or in the community. And so it was that an assembly meeting for the student council election led eventually to the forming of our stump speaker society. Tom Carey was one of the candidates and he wanted to win that election. But, well, what do you think of his speech? And uh, if I'm elected, and uh, I hope I will be, uh, I promise you that the, the student council will um, investigate the possibilities of uh, staggering the lunch hour to uh, uh, reduce uh, congestion and crowding. Uh, I also think that the students... Yes, Tom's audience was not tuned in on him. No matter how good his ideas were, he was not getting them across. And his friend, Bill Brent, was worried. Why didn't they listen to Tom? He was trying to tell them something, but what was it? Hey, Bill. You fella no catch a mirrors belong me fella, or yours belong big fella crowd. What did you say? Didn't you understand my pigeon English? No. I was trying to get across the idea that you weren't getting any ideas across to the gang in there. It sounded interesting, but did you hear what Tom said? It sounded like a lot of dumb talk to me. Uh, what good are ideas if people won't listen? You've got to make a world of it, Tom. Yeah, I'd like to help you win this election. How do I meet your campaign manager? It's one idea. But what do we do first? Well, if we're going to win, our big job is to put your ideas across to our audiences. That means making good speeches. And I know just a man who can help us. My dad knows him. He's a lawyer. So we came to see you, Mr. Norton. How can we learn to speak more effectively, to put Tom across in this election? Well, what have you got to say? Who's your audience? What's your purpose in talking to them? Wait a minute. Who's asking the questions here? You are, both of you, to get yourselves ready to speak. You see, there are three major steps to effective speaking, and three subpoints in each of those three steps. In fact, these can be made into a series of triangles that I use to help me remember. Now, can you remember to analyze, plan, and deliver? Analyze, plan, deliver. You got that, Tom? Got it, but what does it mean? Well, let's take them one step at a time. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> like it? Now, when you analyze a speech situation, consider your subject, your audience, and your purpose. First, your subject. Consider your facts and arguments so you will know what you can contribute on this subject. Second, your audience. What is your audience interested in and why? It does make a difference, doesn't it? Consider also your purpose in making a speech, whether it's simply to amuse or to convince someone. In other words, why are we speaking? Now you're on the right track. Well, that certainly seems to cover the analyzed part of it, Mr. Norton. And what's the next basic step? Well, after analyze comes plan. I have it right here. There we are. Plan. Plan. 
what we consider in planning a speech. First, select. Select the material you'll use, uh, the information, the arguments, and so forth. Then after you select, you arrange. Oh, that must mean like writing a term paper. You have your introduction with an interest arouser and a statement of your key idea. Then the main part. Body, all outline. Main points, subpoints. Now, a logical development of ideas. And in conclusion, you wind it up. Or tell them what you told them. Then the third part of your plan is to illustrate. Illustrate? I can't draw. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean drawings, though it does help to visualize your ideas. But you can sometimes paint a picture with words to make your points clear. Oh, I get it. I usually use a note card like this when I speak. I jot down an outline of the ideas and illustrations that I have selected and arranged. Then, I know my speech will be according to plan, based on my analyzing. And now, there's more? Oh, yes. The result that you've done all this for, the delivery. All right, this one's on me. Let's see. Delivery includes being direct. Uh, what about it? Would you rather hear me speak while I gaze at the ceiling or around the room? Or would you prefer that I look at you as I speak, holding your interest and showing you that I am interested in what I'm saying? Boy, that one is on me. I guess I wasn't very direct when I made my speech last week, was I? Well, let's see. Be distinct. That makes sense, but I guess all of us don't always remember it. There's no use speaking if people don't understand. That's it. Open your mouth. Wake up your speech muscles. Improve your enunciation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's see. Be lively. You mean dance around? <laughs> well, not exactly. But I put it up to you. Should I speak with a fixed expression and stance? Or should my gestures and facial expression be lively to hold your interest and emphasize what I'm saying? Should my voice be lively too? Changing in loudness and in emphasis. Yeah, I guess we have been sort of lazy mouth about <laughs> lively <laughs> our speaking. And I can see that it's better speaking to be distinct. Yes, you've done a lot of work. Now, top it off with a good delivery. And I can see there's a lot to be learned. A lot. In fact, we ought to line up some of the others, learn some of this speaking, and really put this election over. Oh, that's all right. But the speaking business. That'll be important long after the election's forgotten. Be our advisor. Well, that was the start of our speech club, the Stump Speaker Society. We agreed that there were many good books to study together, and we could learn by examining good speakers in action, in person, in films, and on the radio. And Bill and the other fellows in the club are developing effective speaking techniques. As they go on through school and out into life, they'll find many occasions when the ability to express themselves will be a real asset. They'll find that these principles of public speaking are good guides. Analyze your subject, your audience, and your purpose. Plan your speech. First, select your material, then arrange it and illustrate. And when you deliver your speech, be direct, be distinct, and be lively. Whether Tom wins the election or not, he and the others are learning the power and personal development that comes when one is able to express oneself to a group of people. Tom still has much to learn but he's on his way to a better social life, better school life, 
and better business life with effective speaking.